Hello and welcome to our beginner series for V-Ray in Cinema 4D, designed to help you get started with the product and start rendering in no time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the V-Ray frame buffer to post-process your images and achieve great results in no time. Don't forget to download our project files. The link is in the video description so you can practice with the scene in your own time. Now let's get started. First, we need to open our history panel and from the V-Ray settings, choose a path on your computer where our images will be saved. To get all the benefits of post-processing with V-Ray, we need to first add some render elements. Render elements will allow us to precisely interact with our image. Let's begin by adding a light mix render element. This render elements lets us change how bright our lights are and even their colors. We also get to pick how we group the lights together. And since we have several lights in our scene, I'll pick instanced lights. Next, let's drag the whole beauty category to the list. This will set up something called Back to Beauty for us, which helps recreate our original image using all the elements like lighting, refractions, reflections, and so on. We'll use some of these render elements later to enhance parts of our image. The last render element we're going to add is called a crypto mat. This helps us create masks based on different things like an object's name, the material's name, and more. For this project, I'll add two crypto mats one based on the objects and one based on the materials. Lastly, I'll turn on the V-Ray denoiser just in case we need it later on. Now we're ready to render out our image. After it's done rendering, we can see all the render elements in this drop-down menu. Before we switch our source mode from RGB to light mix and later on to composite, let's look at the layer stack on the top right. Right now we only have something called a tone mapper. I usually add this while still working on the scene to make sure we have great shadows and a nice roll off on the highlights. You can choose different types of tone mappers, each with various settings. For this scene, I'm using the Ampus tone map. Now let's create our first layer in the stack. By clicking the plus sign in the top left corner, I'll add a white balance layer and make the image a bit warmer. Next, we'll add a color balance layer and adjust the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights separately. Now I want to brighten up the ground under the car. We can use an exposure layer for that, raising it by half a stop and adding some contrast to make it stand out. But the layer is affecting the whole image, so we need to use a mask. With the layer selected, I'll choose the Crypto Mat Mask and we'll lose the changes we made temporarily. That's because we haven't picked anything and our mask is empty. From the element drop-down, I can select one of the two crypto mat masks we set up earlier. Then I just use the pick button and add the ground to the selection list. I can also invert the selection or preview it to ensure I've got the right object selected. Let me add one more layer, the curves adjustment, to bring back more detail to the trees. A simple S-curve is enough, and I can use this button to mask the effect of the layer and make my selection. To wrap everything up, I'll add a lookup table layer and choose where my LUTs are saved on the computer. 
Then I can simply hover over them in a list view and it will show me how they'll change the image. Each layer comes with blending options and I'll talk more about those later in this video. There's also an opacity setting which lets you control how much that layer affects the final image. Lastly, I'll turn on the lens effects, giving our image a beautiful bloom and glare. As far as a daytime look goes, the image is almost done. What we need to change next is the big overhead light. For this, we'll switch the source mode from RGB to light mix. In this mode, I can change the color and intensity of our lights. If you want to look at one specific light, you can hold the Alt key and click next to its name. I'm going to turn off the overhead light and maybe the tail lights too. I'd also like to make the image warmer using the color of the sunlight. And maybe add a soft blue tint to the skylight to create some color contrast. Since I turned off the big overhead light, I see a little bit of noise in the areas it was illuminating. But remember, I turned on the V-Ray denoiser earlier, so now I can use it. By right-clicking on the denoiser layer, I can choose the Crypto Matte Mask to make sure it only affects the noisy part of the image. For the final touches, I'll change the intensity of a few accent lights. I'll save this version by clicking the plus sign above the history panel. Now, let's say I want the image to look more like nighttime. To do that, I'll lower the brightness of the sun and skylights a lot and give them a more noticeable blue color. I'll also increase the brightness of some of the accent lights. Just be careful with this, as turning them up too much can create unwanted noise in the image. Before I turn on the big overhead light, I want to make sure the colors of all the accent lights make sense with the scene. Now I'll turn on the overhead light and the tail lights and experiment with how bright and what color they should be. The last touch will be adjusting the lens effects to match the new light intensities. With the night version finished, I'll quickly save it in the history and then switch to the last source mode called Composite Mode. I could simply click the button for this, but that will discard all my light mix changes and simply load the beauty render elements I set up earlier. And I want to keep the night version, so I'll press the button labeled to Composite and it will carry everything over without losing any data. While we're here, I should mention what the To Scene button does. If you press it, all the changes you made to the colors and intensity of the lights will actually change those lights in the Cinema 4D project itself. That means the next time I render the accent lights, for example, they'll already have the settings I picked in light mix mode. Now, let's press the To Composite button. It makes a folder called Light Mix, and I can still change things if I want. 
In composite mode, I can access the individual render elements and use them to enhance specific parts of the image. I'll add a render element by clicking the plus sign. Next, I'll change it to Atmospheric Effects from the Element drop-down menu. This will add a new layer of fog to the image, and I can tweak its intensity and color just as I did with the lights earlier. I can also try out different blending modes and choose the one that works best for this image. Another handy feature in this mode is the ability to add adjustment layers just for one specific render element. For example, the fog looks good, but now I have lost a bit of contrast, and it does spread a bit too much. So with the atmospheric effects selected, I can click on the plus sign and add a curves adjustment. Notice the arrow pointing down to the atmospheric effects? That means these adjustments will only affect that render element and not the whole image. A simple S-curve will boost the contrast and limit the fog. Lastly, I want to show you that the masks from before work in composite mode too. So I can add something called a specular render element. Play with how strong it is and change its color to a saturated blue hue. By adding a crypto matte mask and picking all the trees, I can make the image feel like it's lit by the moon. I'll save this version to the history too. And with the comparison tool, we can look at the differences between the versions. If you want to save a version of the image, you can click the floppy disk button and save it as a JPEG or a PNG. This saves a version with all the color corrections and light mix changes baked into your image so you can share it easily with clients and coworkers. If you want to export a version with all of your color corrections and light mix changes still accessible, you can save the image as a VR image. When you open a VR image in the frame buffer, you'll see all the color corrections and light mix changes. By now, you should know how to use all the different tools in the V-Ray frame buffer to make your images look amazing. Make sure to check out the rest of the videos in our beginner series for V-Ray for Cinema 4D or visit our blog and documentation at chaos.com for more tips and tricks. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and see you soon.